Hey, Rangers fans, so glad you're back with us. John Giannone, Steve Valiquette. Game one of 82, Rangers embark on their season beginning Tuesday night at the Garden against the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's a rematch of the Eastern Conference Final from four months ago, but a slightly different looking Ranger team. So we have, let's see, Vincent Trocek is here, but Kopp and Vetrano and Strom are not. So that said, size up and break down what we're going to see. Well, I'm just excited to see uh, a team that gets off to a quick start. And I think that most importantly, the Rangers have to understand internally that the playoffs start now, game one. It's the way hockey is. It's going to be decided, unfortunately, by Thanksgiving. And getting off to a slow start is something that the Rangers need to avoid because we've seen this in years past where a very good, uh, successful run with a young team can sometimes come out of the gate slow because you think it's going to be easy and it's going to be anything but easy. It's a very tough schedule for the uh, first few weeks and uh, look, no easy start against Tampa Bay at home for your home opener. Yeah, for sure. Year two under Gerard Gallant who has been through this kind of thing before. So that said, what do you think is the message to the Rangers? As you said, sometimes you don't know whether carryover exists or what happened last year is meaningless. Well, yeah, definitely not meaningless because it's going to matter when they get there. Uh, you still got to get through the regular season. And as the fans remember, uh, the regular season is very east-west. It's wide open. There are some nights the opposition just doesn't show up. And some nights you're coming off of a game that's with travel. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, game that has to really rely on health and how frequently everybody is able to play with one another. And you, you gel, but at the same time, can you get off to a start where you can then build the next month? Because when you get to December and January, if you're not defending well, and then it gets a little bit more difficult to score, then we're talking about a totally different season, especially if it gets away with you from you actually in the first month or so. There are some intriguing storylines to this team despite the Final Four success last year, and some of that has to do with right-wingers, who are they? And some of it has to do with young players and their development. Who do you think is the Ranger most likely to have a bust at? I think it's Alexi Lafreniere, and I'm hoping that he embraces the right side. Um, look, I know that young players sometimes are going to have difficulty in their own zone when they switch from a left wing position to a right wing position, but I thought this was interesting. He had 19 goals last year, 10 of them were from the right side of the ice. So you end up all over the place in the offensive zone anyway, and if that's the case, then I don't think that should be something that the player should be concerned with. Um, number two, uh, Lafreniere has not been given the same opportunity that third overall pick Tim Stutzla in Ottawa has been given because Ottawa is a bottom basement team. The Rangers are a contending team. The left side with Panarin and Kreider is jamming up his ice time. But one thing that I looked at earlier today was that Stutzla, he had 15 goals on 60 high danger chances, and Lafreniere had 14 on 31. He had half the amount of chances. So Lafreniere is not getting the opportunity to play because there's such talent at the top of the Rangers lineup, but it doesn't mean that he's not gonna break out. Over the last two years, he and Kreider have 30 five on five goals, and you're looking at a, a shooting percentage that is also tied with Chris Kreider on high danger chances. What I'm telling you is that Lafreniere is very good at finishing when he's given the opportunity. Now more opportunities should translate into more goals. I think he's going to break out as long as he starts to get the ice time. Now whether he has to take that ice time by earning it and grabbing it from other guys or he, he just gets a little bit more of an opportunity and gets some power play time. I just think it's hard being where he is. And you know what else doesn't work, John? Being a left-handed shot on the Rangers' power play, mm -hmm. you can't swap Strom for he. You've got to actually have Trocheck there because you need a righty in that bumper position. And that's the springboard to my next question, which is the power play. We saw it last year cover a whole lot of ills from Rangers' five-on-five -five offensive play. Can the power play sustain year over year? What is it about this Ranger power play that you think could make it, I'm not going to say as successful because Kreider had 26, yeah. but somewhat as successful as last year? And, and I think there's going to be an element to teams are going to understand that uh, Kreider and Zibanejad work off one another. And if you take away both of those guys on a power play, you can really nullify what the Rangers do. But they do have two more passing weapons in Panarin and Fox. 
And when you look at all of the primary passes that Kreider received for his 26 power play goals, it was really well distributed between Panarin Fox and Zibanejad. It wasn't just Zibanejad. But the other thing is this. Trocek is going to be a weapon in that bumper position. He had a 48% shooting percentage on broken plays and rebounds last season. Now, that's something the Rangers didn't do well last year as a team. This is also lending you to believe that it's more of a power play uh, in the playoffs type of goal because it's net front. And then you're hoping the more coverage that he receives, maybe that opens up Kreider. And those types of looks are going to be something that are going to be a little bit new this year. And you, you need some change too, because if you think you're going to roll out the same look to the NHL year over year, you're not going to have sustained su success. All right, so internet being what it is, and for better or worse, things live forever, put you on the spot. <laughs> Rangers will be what this year? Uh, as in what place they're going to finish mm -hmm. in the Metro. So I see the Rangers getting in, and I see Boston coming out, and I think the Islanders are getting back in. That's the way I see the Metro fitting up. And uh, look, I think, that, I think that the Rangers have to understand more than anything, and I think I've been repeating myself on this point, just get off to a great start. Mm -hmm. You just can't get behind in this league. It, it, it becomes insurmountable. And everybody wants to go back to the year that uh, was 2019 when St. Louis was yeah. rolling in last place come January 1st, and I know they won a cup, but I mean, that's a, a hundred year event to mm -hmm. me. That, I, I don't see that happening ever again. All right, so we will be here to chronicle it throughout the season on MSG.com. Rangers and Lightning Tuesday night. Enjoy the game, everyone.